Hello everybody, Paul Richards here. Welcome to vlog number 29. And in this episode, we're talking about bandwidth for live streaming. And video conferencing if you're doing both and hosting a live show. Not the sexiest thing in the world, but not having enough bandwidth will stop your next live stream in its tracks. So it's an important topic, and we are going to talk about it in this vlog. So, back in the days of standard definition, when you could stream in 320 by 240 and that was okay, even though the box was tiny, uh, you could get away with 500 kilobits when you were encoding your stream in Flash. Um, so that was enough to get by with a 56K modem. Let's take a look at some really basic stuff before we get into it in case you're new. Um, megabytes are used for, it's a term for files, file sizes stored on a hard drive. Megabits is information that's actually being streamed. So when we're talking about bandwidth for live streaming, we're talking about how many megabits per second are we streaming. And we're going to talk about, you know, checking your bandwidth, how to make sure you have enough, different types of it. And, and I think the first thing we need to take a look at is the resolution in which we are going to stream. We've got to determine whether we want to do 720 or 1080. In my opinion, anything lower than 720 is just not acceptable in, t in 2016. You know, we're going into 2017. I'm going to make the argument that 1080p is where we want to be. So um, I need to make that argument now. So first of all, let's take a look at you okay, know, kind of where we, we came are recording from. in SD. I've actually, this is actually the first time I've ever done this. So SD 320 by 240. This is what people used to record in when they had 56K modems. Wow. So that was a really tiny little screen. That is 320 by 240. Now let's look at 720. Okay, so right now we are recording in 720p. Uh, we are going to look at this and we are going to see what the difference between 720p and 1080p is. Honestly, it's, good. it's not going to be a huge difference, but if you're looking at it on a 1080p display, it should be. So, Okay, so I'm going to skip my 1080p um, recording because this is 1080p right here. And this is what I record in, this is what I upload in, and this is what I usually stream in unless there's some type of issue. Now, really, uh, there's a couple things here. One is the bandwidth that it takes to do 1080p live streaming or 720p live streaming, so we're gonna look at that. And the processing power that it also takes, because it takes two things here. Really good processor to be able to process all that 1080p video and stream it at the same time, and record it potentially if you're recording your hard drive. So it becomes a kind of a balancing act. You know, is your computer strong enough to do a 1080p stream? Is your bandwidth strong enough to do a 1080p stream? So that's where I want our customers to go. I think you should be doing 1080. Of course, to be safe, we always say just start with 720. If it works, inch your way up and test, test, test. Make sure everything's right. We have some testing tools to show you how to do this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you our tools here that we have for free and then some tools that are just out there on the internet. So this is a speed.ptzoptics.com and we're gonna take a look at this. And all you have to do is go to this website and it's going to immediately ping our server, which is in Scottsdale, Arizona. And it's gonna give you a pretty good upload and download speed. Uh, so you can see here, we can, we're, getting, we're getting 19 download and six upload. Now, I talked to my engineers about this and I'm really gonna quickly explain the difference between Ookla and our service, because that's really the, uh, the difference here. So actually, Ookla, let's go to speed test. I think speed test is the easier one. So here we go, it's gonna start a scan, I guess, begin test. There we are in Philadelphia. And it's going to test, and it's going to give a completely different um, test than what we just got. So you can see here, it's going right from where I am to the very closest server, giving us the best possible scenario, okay? Our, our test, and while well, that test is running, is giving us pretty much the worst case scenario. And I'll ex briefly explain why. So our server's in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm in Philadelphia. To get to Scottsdale, Arizona, you actually have to hit, do what's called network hopping. So I'm hopping between server and server and server another server. So um, this is actually giving me a worst case scenario, but we think that what you really wanna do is you wanna hit 
this is like absolute, like if six megabits per second is what this is t test is giving me, then I don't wanna be sending any more than that because that's worst case scenario. This over here is gonna give us best case scenario. And as you can see here, it's giving me 95 down and 23 up. This tool was technically created to lobby in the government so that places with low bandwidth access could get better, uh, could lobby for better bandwidth. It's not necessarily made for live streaming. This tool's actually for video conferencing because video conferencing, you actually have to reach out to a server that could be in California, it could be in the Midwest, it could be in New York. Now, with live streaming on YouTube and Facebook, they put their servers everywhere. So it's definitely gonna be better case scenario than our speed test, but probably less than what you're seeing on speed tests. So by getting like an average here between our two tests, it allows you to prepare for the worst and be good for um, your next system. So the next thing I wanna show you guys is the back end of YouTube. And YouTube and Facebook are using something called adaptive bitrate streaming. And this is uh, partially why I'm arguing why we should be doing 1080p streaming. Because the way adaptive bitrate streaming works, I'm just going to go into my live streaming tab here so that we can take a look at some of this. My, my stream is offline, unfortunately. Um, but basically, you take the best quality stream. So if you send them 1080p, they will take that 1080p stream and they will break it down into 720, into 480 into 240 and they will break it down into all the different bit rates that are possible and then they will serve the best possible bit rate to the viewers so they'll optimize the video quality for the viewers based on their available bandwidth so you really in, in, in today's day and age you this further needs the support to uh, to support a stream in the highest quality possible to allow your CDN to make the best choices for your viewers Technically, this, this um, technology, sometimes you might uh, consider it being heard as live cloud encoding. So how do we calculate what we need? Well, let's go to our events tab here, and let's take a look at, this is a show we're going to do this week at the WFX show in Louisville, Kentucky, and we're going to go to ingestion settings. And you can see here, basically, your, um, your content delivery network is going to make a suggestion. For you. They're going to dictate what they want really. YouTube is one of the best. They've got these really wide suggestions. So for 1080p they're saying 3000 kilobits, so that's 3 megabits per second, up to 6 megabits per second for 1080p. And they're even going all the way up to 1440, which would be 6 megabits per second to 13 megabits per second. So what does this mean? Well, you would take your speed test, and I would highly recommend using our speed test. You can see here at, at a minimum, this is the minimum you would be getting, um, which is like basically start here at 6.6. .6. That means I can easily do 1080p, no problem, with my upload speeds, and assuming that my processor can handle it. So um, I'm definitely gonna be streaming at 1080p there. And uh, so if your stream requires three to six, um, megabits for 1080p, you do want to make sure you have at least an additional 30% of available bandwidth to sustain a solid transfer throughout your, um, throughout your system. So if I'm going to be doing anywhere from 3 to 6, then I most likely want to have 8 to 10. And with 6 being our minimum here and speed test telling us we have 23, we are safe. We're probably safe to do 1440p. So we found that Speedtest and Ookla are presenting the absolute best possible scenario while our tool is actually created to reach out to our GoDaddy server in Scottsdale, Arizona. This will actually show the available bandwidth if you're interested in putting it into your own server for testing. So the next thing is, is that once we've looked at all of this, we can also determine, now everything's doing H.264 compression right now, but you can also compress your audio. So because YouTube's kind of leaving it open-ended between three megabits and six megabits, what is in between there? Well, in between there, you have the options to, you know, for frame rate, for audio compression, and depending on your setup in Wirecast, in vMix, on your TriCaster, um, you can use that to, they'll, they'll give you additional options to get that right. Now the final thoughts here, final thoughts, I don't wanna to go too long. If you're also doing video conferencing for a high quality HD video conference, two to three megabits is more than enough, 
but that adds on top of whatever you're streaming, okay? Usually you can do video conferences with less. You know, you can video conference with somebody on their phone with three or four G. So just rem just keep that in mind if you're gonna be interviewing people and capturing that audio and video and bringing it into your live stream, that adds additional bandwidth. Now the last thing I wanna leave you with is that we have a free download of a bandwidth checklist, just best practices, that's gonna be in the link below. And then we have our speed test tool, and that speed test tool, you can actually download that software, install it on your own server. You know, some people have wanted to do that. It gets a little bit probably beyond what the normal people are using, but you can do that as well. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. This has been Bandwidth for Live Streaming. I hope it was helpful. Have a nice day.